سلام می کنم به دانشجوان عزیز خانم ها و آقایان بسیار خوشحالم از اینکه امروز آمدم اینجا پیش شما My greetings to all of you dear students ladies and gentlemen I'm very happy to have this opportunity to be addressing you today هر وقت در جمع دانشجوان میام خودم رو جوان احساس میکنم البته من هنوز جوانم و دو سه سال از شما بزرگترم Whenever I'm among students, I feel young, and of course I am young. I'm just a few years younger than you, older than you. همونطور که همه تون خبر دارید رئی جمهور جدید آمریکا هفت کشور اطباع هفت کشور رو محدودیت ایجاد قائل شده که بروند به آمریکا برای ورود به آمریکا مهاجرت محدودیت قائل شده. As I'm sure you're all aware, the new U.S. president has issued a travel ban against citizens from seven countries. And one of these countries is Iran. And this is a very important ایران هم جز اون بود به عنوان کشورهای خطرناک برای امنیت آمریکا معرفی شده بودند. Of course there has been precedent to that because under uh, the former president Obama six countries one of which was Iran were also uh, described as dangerous countries. و در حقیقت از سال 2015 ایران رسما خطرناک برای امنیت آمریکا اعلام شد. In fact, since 2015, Iran has been deemed as dangerous for U.S. security. و به همین دلیل مردم کشور یه محدودیت هایی براشون قائل شده. Um, hence the restrictions imposed on these countries. آیا واقعا همه ما ایرانی ها تروریستیم؟ Now, are we Iranians are we really all terrorists? آیا برای صلح دنیا من خطرناکتر از ترامپ هم؟ Do I pose a greater danger to world security than Trump? این طرز سیاست گذاری درست نیست. These kind of policies are wrong. ضمن اینکه مردم ایران با حکومت ایران فرق دارن و بین اونها اساسا به خاطر همین سیاست ها اختلاف است. پلاس uh, the fact that the Iranian government is separate from the Iranian people as a matter of fact Iranian people are disenchanted with the government because of their policies. قبل از اینکه من به این موارد اختلاف اشاره کنم لازم است به یادآوری که شهردار لندن صادقان برای احترام به ایرانی های ایرانی ها روز اسکار که 24 مارچ باید باشه فیلم یکی از فیلم های ایرانی که پای فینال رسیده و در اسکار قرار است در مسابقه شرکت بکنه در میدان ترافالگار نمایش داده میشه و من شما رو دعوت میکنم همتون رو که بیایید و این فیلم رو ببینید Before I highlight the differences between the Iranian government and people I would like to urge you all to attend uh, the showing or the screening of an Iranian film that's been nominated for best foreign film for the Oscars and uh, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, is actually showing it on, uh, I believe, 24th of March at Trafalgar Square. So please all try and attend that screening. It's an open air screening. The director of this film, which is called Salesman, has already won an Oscar. و چون کارگردان و هنرپیشه ها ایرانی هستن نمیتونستن وارد آمریکا بشن بنابراین شهردار لندن در حقیقت با این ابتکار 
جواب این محدودیت رو داده و ما ایرانی ها از این ابتکار تشکر میکنیم So uh, because the cast and the director of the film are naturally Iranian and banned from entering the United States, the mayor of London has taken this initiative and we Iranians are indeed grateful to him for that. Was hami jaba mekham ishare shoma ro be in jalb konam ke Iran film hay khali khubi dare va film hay Iran jawaiz mutaddidi borda. And I would like to um, remind you all to go and see Iranian films because Iranian films are very good and they've won many awards. And I would like to remind you all to go and see Iranian films Unfortunately, several Iranian film directors and actors and actresses uh, on charges of violating uh, the regime's uh, rules have been imprisoned and uh, they, are, they are currently still behind bars in Iran. مدتی در زندان بود و ده سال حبس گرفت. One of whom was Jaf Apanahi who is a director he hadn't even uh, released the film he was working on but he was imprisoned uh, for it and uh, for he was given in fact a 10 year prison term. اما پرزیدنت ترامپ به خاطر نقض حقوق بشر از سوی حکومت ایران نیست که ورود اطباء ایرانی رو با آمریکا محدود کرده. But uh, President Trump has not banned Iranian people over violation of human rights by the Iranian government. بلکه به خاطر سیاست‌های خارجی حکومته. But he's done so because of the government's Iranian government's foreign policies. و این سیاست‌های خارجی ضمناً مورد مخالفت مردم ایران هم هست. Which These foreign policies, which are, by the way, also opposed by the Iranian people. In سیاست های خارجی عبارت است از حمایت ایران از بشار اسد به وسیله ارسال نیروی نظامی اسلحه و پول. These foreign policies include Iran's support for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and the support is, includes sending military forces, weapons and money. In Iran, in the Iraq, the government is the the Iran also interferes in Iraq's uh, internal affairs and likewise sends uh, its militia uh, money and weapons. Iran be Shi'ayan Husi dar Yaman komak kard, aslahe dad, niruy nizami fedestad munar amuzesh dad. Iran uh, helped the Shi'ite Houthis in Yemen Uh, sent them military weapons and provided them with training. Which uh, led to civil war in Yemen. Iran, as Iran Hezbollah Lebanon, who is in the war with Israel, helps to support Iran. Um, gives much support to Hezbollah, Lebanon's Hezbollah, which is on the border with Israel. و میدونید که حزب الله جزء گروه های تروریستی در آمریکا شناخته شده. And as you are aware, uh, Lebanon's Hezbollah is known as a terrorist group in the United States. و حساب های اونا رو بسته. And uh, the US has frozen their bank accounts. چند ماه قبل سید حسن الله رهبر حزب الله یک سخنرانی کرد که شما در یوتیوب هم الان میتونید پیدا کنید. Hezbollah's leader said uh, Nasrullah uh, gave a speech recently and you can see it on YouTube. او گفتش که مهم نیست که آمریکا ما رو تحریم کرده. تمام احتیاجات ما به وسیله ایران برطرف میشه حتی لباسی که ما میپوشیم 
غذایی که میخوریم اسلحه ای که داریم تماما به وسیله ایران تمیم میشه Nasrullah said, oh, we're not worried about the U.S. sanctions against us because Iran provides for all our needs, including the clothes that we wear, our food and our weapons. Um, Iran be Shiaian Bahrain kumak mikune. Iran likewise helps the Shiites in Bahrain. Ba hamin masale باعث اعتراض حکومت بحرین شده بارا اعتراض کردن مردم ایران به این سیاست ها اعتراض دارن برای که ما فکر میکنیم پول ایران بایستی صرف بهبود وضعیت مردم بشه برای که ایران بایستی صرف بهبود وضعیت مردم بشه the standards of living in the country. من برای حزب الله لبنان و تمام شیعیان خاورمیانه خیلی احترام قائلم. I have every respect for Lebanon's Hezbollah and all the Shiites around the Middle East. اما هیچ دلیلی نمی‌بینم که پول ایران صرف خرید اسلحه برای اونا بشه. But I can see no justification in spending Iranian money on buying arms for them. و این در حالی است که فقر در ایران روز به روز گسترش پیدا میکنه. And this is taking place while uh, poverty in Iran is increasing on a daily basis. چرا به جای اینکه ما مدرسه و بیمارستان بسازیم، باعثی پول بدیم به حزب الله که اسلحه بخره، موشک بخره؟ Why are we giving money to Hezbollah to buy weapons, to buy missiles rather than building schools and hospitals? درصد بیکاری در ایران خیلی بالاست. There's a high percentage of unemployment in Iran. آزادی ها فوق العاده کمه. There's very little freedom. و این باعث شده که ایران طبق آمار یونسکو بالاترین درصد فرار مغزا رو در جهان داشته باشه. As a, a result of which based on UNESCO statistics Iran has the largest brain drain in the world. حالا در چنین شرایطی مردم ایران هم تحت ستم حکومت هستند و هم تحت فشار دولت ترامپ که شما واسه آمریکا خطرناکی. Now, و اینجاست که من همیشه میگم بین حکومت ها و مردم فرق بگذارید which is why i always say please differentiate between governments and the people ادعای راجع به اینکه چرا برخی از کشورهایی که صادر کننده تروریست هستند جزء لیست نیستن اعتراض کردند Some have protested, saying, "Why is it that countries, other countries that are on the terrorist list, are not included in this ban?" And right now, I don't really want to name these countries. چندین علت داره که برخی از اون علت که برخی از اون علل برمیگرده به خود آمریکا because basically acts of terrorism they stem for, from several different causes and uh, one goes back one stems actually from the united states itself از جمله کمک به طالبان و ساختن مدارس طالبان for instance the us support for uh, building the Taliban and helping with the Taliban seminaries. و خیلی جالبه که اگر شما به گذشته نگاه بکنید می‌بینید که بعد از 11 سپتامبر تمام رسانه‌های آمریکا یک مسئله رو صحبت می‌کردن و اون اینکه طالبان برای امنیت آمریکا خطرناکه و ویروس یه ویروس خطرناکی رو با بسای پاسی با آمریکا میفرسه. And it's uh, funny because if you look at the past after 9/11 the US media were all reporting 
uh, on the dangers of the Taliban and how the Taliban was actually sending a very lethal virus to various people. و انقدر این پروپاگاندا زیاد بود که اصلا مردم میترسیدن بسای بازش رو باز کنن. And so high was the level of this US propaganda about this virus that people were afraid to open their mail. انقدر مردم رو ترسوندن که اونا همه میگفتن چرا با آمریکا چرا آمریکا به افغانستان حمله نمیکنه. They created such fear that uh, the Americans were saying, why are we not attacking Afghanistan? And once public opinion was ready for such attack, they did launch that attack against Afghanistan. توی مدیا صحبت از این بود که بمب های شیمیایی داره صدام و خطرناکه and before the US attack US led attack on Iraq the media were going on about uh, chemical weapons of Saddam Hussein اما وقتی که رفتن عراق هیچ بمب شیمیایی نبود yet they never found uh, signs of these chemical weapons in Iraq و همچنین که اگر یادتون باشه هیچ ویروسی با بسته پستی به آمریکا نرسید نو و در انی سچ وایروسز دت پیپل و فیرینگ اینا تبلیغات رسانه‌ای بود برای اینکه افکار عمومی رو آماده جنگ بکنن دیز و میدیا پروپاگاندا اونلی تو پریپر پابلیک اپینین فور وار و من وقتی که به گذشته نگاه میکنم از خودم سوال میکنم اینکه دائما میگوین مردم ایران از جمله عبادی تروریست و خطرناکه آیا مقدمه ی حمله به ایران نیست؟ Now when I look back I think that now that they're saying the people of Iran including Abadi are terrorists is this not also a prelude to another war? و اگر این طور باشه آمریکا یک سیاست غلطی رو در پیش گرفته And if such is the case, then uh, the United States is pursuing a very wrong policy. Because the, that such a war may be started by the U.S., but we don't know how it will end. بسیار بدیست. Not to mention the already dire circumstances in the Middle East. و از اونجایی که ما در اصل جهانی شدن به سر میبنیم میدونید که بد بودن شرایط خواهر میانه چطور تأثیر گذاشته در اروپا و میبینید که چقدر مهاجر آمده. And now since we are in the era of globalization you can see how these uh, Uh, the dire situation in the Middle East has affected uh, Europe uh, um, owing to the arrival of the exodus of the refugees. Now all of you here cannot uh, be passive with regards to what's going on in other countries. خونه شما هم میرسه. Sooner or later it's going to affect each and every one of you. چنانی که وقتی که سی سال پیش حافظ اسد و بعد پسرش بشار اسد این چنین مردم سرکوب میکردند اگر اروپا بی تفاوت نبود الان انقدر مجبور نبود که مهاجرین رو قبول بکنه. Just as if 30 years ago when Hafez Assad and after that his son Bashar Assad were oppressing their people, had Europe intervened then, it wouldn't be in a situation now where it has to accept all the refugees from that country. Of course you have to help the uh, refugees from the Middle East. شما در اون زمان ها بود که اینا سرکوب می شدن. And this is the price you have to pay for ignoring these people when they were being oppressed. بنابراین از حالا به بعد ساکت نباشید. Therefore from now on do not remain silent. علیه دیکتاتورها حرف بزنید. 
speak against dictators. چه این دیکتاتور در ایران باشد چه در عربستان باشد چه در آمریکا باشد be this dictator in Iran in Saudi Arabia or the United States که متاسفانه در خاورمیانه تقریبا همه حکومت ها دیکتاتوری است and unfortunately the middle east almost all governments are dictators و علت آتش گرفتن خاورمیانه هم همینه hence the uh, conflagration we see in the Middle East at present. من تشکر می کنم از اینکه اینجا آمدید حرف من می شنید مخصوصا آقای دکتر موسوی که تشریف آورده. I once again thank you all for having come here to listen to me and in particular I'd like to thank Dr. Musavi who is among us. و معمولا یک شایعه هست میگم وکلا زیاد حرف میزنن Now there is a rumor that says lawyers talk too much اما این باور نکنید شایعه است و من برای اینکه ثابت بکنم دروغه من دیگه حرفمو تموم میکنم زودتر که شما فرصت گفتگو داشته باشید Don't believe that and to prove it's only a rumor I'm going to be silent now and allow you to ask questions Thank you, Dr. Badi. So I'll begin by asking some of my own questions before passing over uh, to students in your audience. So my first question to you is, it goes back right to the beginning of your speech. You mentioned Obama. What do you make of the joint comprehensive plan of action conducted by President Obama during his time in office? من با توافق اتمی موافق هستم و این توافقی است که هم به نفع ایران آمریکا و هم همه جهان بوده. I am in favor of the nuclear accord because I believe it has been in the interest of Iran, the United States and the whole world. ولی کن امیدوارم که این توافق تا پایان دوران راستی آزمایی دوام پیدا بکنه برای اینکه هم یه ادعی در سمت ایران ادعی هم در آمریکا باش مخالفت But I hope that the implementation of the joint comprehensive plan of action will uh, continue until the end of the verification period because there are parties on the Iranian side and also on the US side that are against it Do you therefore agree with Trump's criticism that at best the plan of action delays the bomb and the fact that friendly loaded nature of the sanctions relief means that Iran has enjoyed too many benefits. من همونطور که گفتم با برجام موافقم یعنی در حقیقت ترامپ هیچ وقت نگفته که این توافق خوب بوده همیشه میگه بدترین توافق است که آمریکا کرده ولی که من میگم توافق خوبیه هم به نفع ایران بود هم به نفع آمریکا I have always said and I repeat that this uh, um, the nuclear accord has been um, very good because it's been um, in the interest of both the US and Iran and Trump has always said that this has not been a good deal it's nothing new. But in ke Trump fik mi kard ke Iran ro bish az bish baasti tahrim kard va kamalan iqtisadesh ro shikast dad. Because Trump has always believed that sanctions against Iran should be intensified in order to cripple that country's economy. In fact, Trump is just talking about regime change. Sadaqane be shoma begam. Man ham be regime Iran etaqadai farabani daram va shaksanam. اگر عوض بشه قصه نمیخورم to tell you the truth I personally have many criticisms of the Iranian government and should there be a regime change I'm not going to be saddened by it اما صحبت اینه که تغییر رژیم به چه بهایی آیا به همون بهایی که برداشتن صدام حسین برای عراق بود به اون بها میخوان رژیم ما رو عوض بکنن but the question is at what price Um, is it going to be at the same price as um, changing the regime and removing Saddam Hussein from Iraq? 
اون این رج... این بهای خیلی زیادیه و هیچ کدوم از مردم ایران حاضر نیستن این بهای سنگین رو بپردازن. Now that would be a very heavy price and no one in Iran none of the people would like to pay such a heavy price. And last year there were parliamentary elections in Iran and the reformists were able to gain some seats. Do you think that the government is heading in the right direction? طبق قانون اساسی کلی اختیارات با رهبره و حتی رهبر میتونه قوانین رو وتو بکنه. Based on the Iranian constitution, uh, the um, authority lies solely in with the supreme leader and supreme leader has every right to veto legislation. Um, با آمدن رئیس جمهور روحانی و یا مدرسه جدید که تعدادی از رفرمیست ها توش هستن هیچ بهبودی در شرایط ایران دیده نشده um, The coming to power of a new president in Iran or uh, the number of seats gained by the reformist in Iran has not improved the situation in the country whatsoever برای اینکه یک گروه خیلی کوچکی که در حکومت هستن تمام اختیارات قانونی رو طبق قانون اساسی دارن because based on the constitution uh, a very small group in, who are in power in the country have the full authority uh. um, and given that one of the conditions for legislative elections with few exceptions is that a candidate must be a practicing muslim is that something that should be changed for iran to to change در ایران طبق قانون فقط لازم نیست که کسی مسلمان باشه. Based on the law in Iran, no, it's not necessary for everyone to be a Muslim. بلکه باید این مورد تایید رژیم هم باشه. It's not only enough to be a Muslim. That person must also be approved by the government. و منظورم از رژیم این است که آیت الله خامنه ای یعنی رهبر یک شورای بعد از رهبر یک شورای نگهبان هست از ذر قدرت and by this power I'm referring to the supreme leader and after the supreme leader there is an oversight council that has to vet candidates and it's called the guardian council و تمامی کاندیده ها بایستی اول تایید صلاحیت در شورای نگهبان بشه. And the Guardian Council must vet and deem all candidates competent before they can even stand for any elections. شورای نگهبان از 12 عضو تشکیل میشه. Now the Guardian Council comprised of 12 members. که 6 تا اونها روحانی هستن مستقیما از طرف رهبر انتخاب میشن. Six of whom are clerics and they have been directly appointed by the supreme leader. شش تا دیگه به وسیله رئیس قوه قضاییه تعیین میشن از پارلمان رای میگیرن and the other six have been um, nominated by the head of the judiciary and uh, before they stand و رئیس قوه قضاییه را هم رهبر انتخاب میکنه and the that head of the judiciary is actually appointed by the supreme leader. بنابراین پس می‌بینید شش نفر دیگر هم به صورت غیر مستقیم از طرف رهبر انتخاب می‌شن. So to all intents and purposes the other six non-clerics are also appointed albeit indirectly by the supreme leader. و نقش مردم در اینجا کجاست؟ And now what role do the people play in all this? و هر کاندیدایی با اسی مورد تایید این شورا باشه. And so every candidate in these elections has to be vetted by uh, this Guardian Council. And that's why a parliament cannot work as a real parliament and to perform it, the tasks uh, of a real parliament. مسیحیان، یهودیان و زرتشتی ها هم هر کدام می توانند یک نماینده داشته باشند. 
Um, and plus the fact that uh, Christians, uh, Jews and Zoroastrians can all have uh, an, an MP in majlis each. But of course, just one MP in a majlis representing these religious minorities cannot do much. Yeah, but although non-Muslims cannot do anything, even Muslims in our country can't do anything, precisely because of the uh, laws that I've mentioned. Even if people get their power to choose their representatives, do you think that the Iranian government should still be made secular? مردم ایران در سال 1979 یک اشتباه تاریخی بزرگ کردن و به حکومت اسلامی رأی دادن بدون که بدونن محتواش چیه. In 1979 the people of Iran made a very drastic mistake and they voted for an Islamic Republic without knowing what the consequences would be. و 38 سال حکومت اسلامی به مردم ایران نشان داد که وقتی که مذهب در قدرت سیاسی قرار میگیره چقدر میتونه خطرناک باشه and for 38 years the iranian people realized how dangerous a theocracy can be بنابراین اگر رفراندومی آزادانه صورت بگیره من به شما قول میدم که بیش از 90 درصد مردم رأی به جدایی مذهب از حکومت میدن Therefore, if there were to be a referendum tomorrow, I can assure you that over 90% of the Iranian people would vote for separation of state from religion. And perhaps that is one um, main difference Iran has with other countries in the Middle East. مثلا نمونه شما در مصر دیدیم اما مردم ایران چون نتیجه حکومت اسلامی رو دیدن دیگه میخوان سکولار بشن. Unfortunately some of these countries in the Middle East staged revolutions because they wanted to have an Islamic government like an example of which we saw in Egypt but the, the Iranian people having suffered such a government do not want that. حتما یادتون هست که بعد از انقلاب اخوان المسلمین در مصر با رأی مردم سر کار اومد. I'm sure you remember that after the Arab Spring it was the uh, Muslim Brotherhood that came to power in Egypt uh, thanks to the people's vote. اما مردم ایران دیگه سیاه هست سال تجربه کردن و دیدن. But the people of Iran have experienced that for 38 years. They've witnessed it with their own eyes. Thank you, Dr. Badi. I now urge students to ask their questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please put your hand up. If we can go to member in the second row, just here. Thank you. Um, I've read before that you do like that you do not approve of Western intervention in the uh, in Iran policies. But how do you think that? Like people from other countries can help with the dict like with the conditions caused by the dictatorships in uh, non democracies. مردم عادی ایران بایستی مخالفت های خودشون رو به طریق مسالمت ها میز ادامه بدن. The people in Iran must continue their opposition to the regime but in a peaceful way. من همیشه مخالف تجربه های تجربه کردن تجربه های شکست خورده هستم. I'm always against uh, experiencing uh, experienced defeats. نمونه بردن دموکراسی به یک کشور همراه با بمب‌های خوشه‌ای عراق است. For example, Iraq is an example of how uh, they uh, um, took uh, bombs to bring to take democracy by taking bombs to Iraq. Therefore, war is no solution. 
اما مقاومت مردم که اگر ادامه داشته باشه حکومت رو گام به گام عقب می‌بره. But it's resistance by the people if it's sustained resistance that will end a government. و مسئله مهم دیگر این است که دولت‌های غربی و مخصوصا چین و روسیه به حکومت ایران کمک نکنند. But what is important is that Western governments and also especially China and Russia stop helping the Iranian government. فقط کافیه که به دیکتاتورها کمک نشه. مردم ایران میدونن که چطوری مبارزه کنن. It's enough if you just stop supporting dictators. Be sure that the Iranian people themselves know how to continue their resistance. Thank you. Perfect. Next question, please. If we can go to a third row. I just wanted some clarification on the previous point you made uh, regarding if there were to be a referendum, you mentioned about 90% of Iran would probably vote for a secular government. Um, as you know, people know, Iran is a very diverse country with about 80 million people. Can you elaborate on or cite any sources that discuss why you believe that they would vote, or the majority, large majority, would vote for a secular government if the vote was tomorrow? Thank you. The people People having experienced an Islamic government, they have seen how religion can be exploited. در ایران طبق قانون تغییر مذهب جرم و حتی مجازات سنگینی در حد اعدام داره. Based on Iranian law, conversion to other religions is uh, considered a crime, and it, uh, the sentences can be as harsh as a death penalty. الان تعدادی از زندانیان سیاسی عقیدتی ما به خاطر اینکه اسلام رو از دینشون رو از اسلام عوض کردن مسیحی شدن زندانن Currently we have several prisoners of conscience who are behind bars uh, merely because they converted from Islam to another religion طبق گزارش گزارشگران بدون مرز ایران پنجمین زندان بزرگ ژورنالیست است. Based on a report by Journalists Without Borders, Iran has the fifth, uh, is, has the fifth number or highest number of journalists uh, in prison. ما شیعه هستیم اما در تهرانی که 12 میلیون جمعیت داره اجازه ندادن حتی یک مسجد سنی ساخته بشه. Iran is a Shiite country. However, in the capital Tehran, where we also have a Sunni population, the Sunnis have not been permitted to build a single Sunni mosque. Iran بعد از کشور چین بیشترین تعداد اعدام رو در جهان داره. After China, Iran has the highest number of death penalty in the world. و, با و در بین ادام شدگان همیشه تعدادی زند زندانی سیاسی هست افراد که در سنین کمتر از 18 سال مرتکب جرم شدن and those who have been executed they have included uh, political prisoners and juveniles who had committed crimes uh, before the age of 18 ما مجازات های قرون وسطایی مثل سنگسار داریم و در همین ماه دو نفر در یکی از شهرهای ایران لرستان محکوم شدن به سنگسار We have the kind of punishments they had in the Middle Ages such as stoning people to death uh, Only in last month alone two people were stoned to death in لرستان which is a province in Iran همه اینها um, به نام اسلام صورت میگیره. And all this has been perpetrated in the name of Islam. و ما مردم ایران که مسلمان هستیم میدانیم اینها تفسیر غلط از اسلامه. 
And we, the Iranian people who <coughs> are Muslims, are fully aware that this is a result of a wrong interpretation of Islam. And when I say that the people want to be removed from the religion, it is not in the meaning that the people do not accept Islam. And when I speak of secularism, I don't mean that the people do not accept Islam. We are Muslims, but we do not want to use the name of Islam to us. We are Muslims, <coughs> but we don't want them to oppress us under the pretext of Islam. And in any case, I accept the principle of your faith. And at the same time, I do ex accept your very uh, reasonable uh, criticism. شما اعتراض کردید به اینکه من عدد 90 درصد از کجا آوردم. You wanted to know how I came up with this 90% figure. این از آمارهای غیر رسمی است که منتشر شده. This 90% is an uh, unofficial statistics. بنابراین اگر اعتراض بکنید که این عدد ممکنه دقیق نباشه من اینو قبول دارم. So I accept your criticism that this might not be a precise figure. ولی کن چیزی که هست با اطمینان میتونم بگم که سکولارها برنده میشن. But what I can say for certain is that the seculars will win. و به همین دلیل که حکومت اینقدر از آزادی مخصوصا آزادی در انتخابات میترسه. Which is why the government fears freedoms, especially freedom during elections. Because it knows, uh, the government knows that such freedom will end its power. Okay. Next question. Um, Andrew, can we go just behind? Yeah. Um, I guess that's kind of a follow-up question even. Um, you, s you said that the, the people would very much be in favor of a secular government. Um, in your personal biography, you've had a lot of opposition to your career as a judge, as a lawyer, as a professor. And I was wondering whether that opposition really just came from government officials or also the people. همونطوری که گفتم مردم ایران نمیخوان از مذهبشون سو استفاده بشه. As I said earlier, the Iranian people do not want their religion to be exploited. و من با استناد به کتاب‌های اسلامی به حکومت بارها ثابت کردم که قوانین ما از جمله ممنوعیت قضاوت برای زنان در اسلام نیست. Now by invoking Islamic texts, I have on several occasions proven to the government that the laws are not Islamic laws including banning women from becoming judges. و اگر شما کتاب دو کتابی که من در مورد سرگذشت خودم نوشتم یعنی ایران اوکنینگ و آنتیل وی ار فری خوانده باشید که من در اون محاکمات هم رو شرح میدم. If you've read both my biographies, Iran Awakening and the second one Until We Are Free, I have described my trials. و می‌بینید که من از طریق پرونده‌هایی که قبول می‌کنم چگونه این قوانین رو به چالش می‌کشم و به قاضی دادگاه می‌گویم که تو مسلمان نیستی و من اسلام رو بهتر از تو می‌فهمم. And you can see how in all my cases I have been challenging the judges, Islamic judges in Iran and saying to them, you are not Muslims and I know Islamic laws. دینم را عوض کردم و من مسلمان نیستم و از این طریق بتواند حکم اعدام من رو بگیره. The Iranian government has uh, sought on many occasions to uh, prove that I'm not a Muslim or I have converted to another religion thereby uh, sent, uh, being able to sentence me to a death penalty. 
اما هیچ وقت موفق نشدن برای که همونطوری که گفتم من اسلام رو خیلی بهتر از حکومت ایران میشناسم but they've never succeeded because as i said i know islam much better than the government does و برای هر حرفی که میزنم ده تا مخز اسلامی داره and for whatever i statement i make i have at least a of 10 um, islamic texts to prove it و به همین دلیل بود که چون دیدن من رو با محاکمه نمیتونن من رو بکشن به عنوان مرتد حکم قتل من رو وزارت اطلاعات داد و من در اثر یک حادثه واقعا از مرگ نجات پیدا کردم and since they realized that they could not sentence me to death on the charge of apostasy the in- the intelligence ministry uh, um, ordered someone to assassinate me and i was very lucky to escape that attempt perfect next question yes second right please um i was just wondering on the basis of your assessment of social political conditions in in iran the 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 degree of resentment towards the government the degree of crispation the international context etc how likely is a revolution possible or mass mo- uh, political grassroots movement a bit like what happened in 2009 in man mutmainam ke I'm confident that uh, the current situation in Iran uh, will not continue. Mizan corruption dar Iran khali balast. There is a very high level of corruption in Iran. Dadgah ha kamalan istiqlal khodshun az dast dada. The courts have lost their independence. Va har chi ki mamuruna amniyati began ona imza mikona. And they sign whatever they're ordered to by the security forces. در صدی بیکاری خیلی بالاست. It's a very high level of unemployment. مسئله زیست محیطی برای ایران یه چیز حاد شده. The environmental issue is a real problem in Iran. و متاسفانه حکومت اصلا به این مسئله توجه نمیکنه. An issue which the government has unfortunately totally ignored. فقر خیلی گسترش پیدا کرده. poverty is widespread and همه با توجه به اینکه بیش از 60 درصد جمعیت ایران زیر 30 ساله اینها احتیاج به کار دارن and bearing in mind that over 60% of the Iranian population are under the age of 30 they need jobs و اینها تمام از دسترسی به یک درآمدی که زندگیشون رو بتونه اداره بکنه خیلی دشواره and it's very difficult for these people to try and eke out a living with the, such a dearth of jobs بنابراین تمام پارامترهایی که تغییرات عمده رو در یک کشور نشون میده در ایران وجود داره therefore all the parameters that show that there is need for major change in iran exist in that country اما اینکه به چه صورت این تغییرات شروع بشه یک مسئله یک سوال بزرگه but as to how this change will happen it's a big question من به عنوان یک مدافع حقوق بشر راهی رو باید نشون بدم که خونریزی کمتری توش باشه As a human rights defender, it's my duty to show a path which uh, amounts to the least bloodshed. بنابراین من موافق خشونت و داشتن اسلحه از سوی مردم نیستم. Therefore, I am against uh, the people um, taking up arms, and I'm against violence. البته چند گروه هستند. که مبارزه مسلحانه هم جزء خط مشیشونه از جمله حزب دموکرات کردستان Of course there are several political in group, uh, groups in Iran that uh, have taken up armed resistance such as the Democratic Party of Kurdistan in Iran و یا گروه پژاک or uh, 
Pejak, uh, also a Kurdish group. Ya guru haya sandar Baluchistan. Or there are other groups in the province of Baluchistan. Ama man tasavvur mikonam khushunat mardom tawjih mikone khushunat hukumat ro. But I really believe that kind of popular violence will justify government violence. Thank you. Perfect. I think this is a good time to finish. Uh, so uh, I would like you all to remain in your seats. But before that, can I ask you all to join me in thanking Dr. Badi for her time this afternoon? <laughs>